around the world with his camera, and I am thrilled that he has joined us here in studio. Nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. You you didn't start off as a, as a photographer. You wanted to be a, a, an artist? Well... Not would, that photography isn't an art, but I, I mean you... Well, I, I never yeah, I never worry much about that, but no, I, I didn't get into photography. I was a, a, a kid who was bad, outstandingly bad at everything. And Were you a bad boy? Is that what you uh, well, mean? Or just bad no, at what it you just did? Uh, hopeless. <laughs> I, I failed grade two academically. Well, there I you mean, go. I, you know, I did some pretty dramatic stuff in that regard. And I went on, and I didn't get much better in the teen years and so on. I did, though, start to gravitate towards people that had interests that sort of intrigued me. Music, uh, jazz, mm -hmm. blues, uh, modern art, Picasso, Cubism, uh, mm -hmm. all that stuff. So I ended up in art school. I, I couldn't get, my parents were horribly disappointed because uh, the romance professions in, when I was young in, in Canada were medicine, law, and accountancy in that order. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I wasn't going to hack any of those <laughs> to my blessed parents' uh, sad depression. Uh, however, I could get into art school. That's all I could do. And I had these interests. I was a terrible art student. But I hung around with very talented guys, and um, it, it was like sort of studying English, but it doesn't make you an author, but it's a good idea to study it if you yeah. have that in it, and that, that sort of work. Third year, we, a marvelous English guy, been a hot water installer in Manchester or something, came to Toronto, became a very hot, famous photographer, taught a bit at the, art, the Ontario College of Art, as it was at the time, and uh, I got sort of, I'd been looking at books, and you could see, I, you know, there was a famous uh, American, David Douglas Duncan, who had, did, did these marvelous book scale essays on Picasso. And, you know, it's sort of light goes on. Like, Geez, you mean you can, you know, like that's a job? You can, uh, <laughs> you can work at this? You can meet <laughs> these amazing people? And, hey, yeah, I mean, it's pretty interesting. I'm, I'm looking at the book. So that sort of went on. The uh, Tony Davenport, the teacher, sort of liked me and, you know, would have me for dinner on Sundays and you know, stuff. And it, the light went on that maybe if I kind of tried hard, I could do photography. Now, at that time, I was doing a lot of cab driving. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, um, and I never, I started, I drove cab after art school for about a year, started getting jobs. I knew I had older buddies who were going into typographical design, art direction, this kind of thing. I started getting jobs, and the, the 60, uh, 62, January 62, I was able to kind of cross over from, uh, you know, out of the, out of the seat of my, out of the seat of, you know, uh, 1332 and uh, behind the Leica. And the, the, I never had a job and I still at it to yeah. some degree. Yeah. Yeah, you, you talk about uh, Picasso. I, I have this theory that, that Picasso, uh, uh, during, during his life, uh, during the, his outstanding career, that, that that he painted these these pictures that everybody just was in awe of, and that he was actually sitting back and saying, "These people are crazy. I'm just goofing around." <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I think there, there's something to the goofing around, but it was there's a you know, it gets to be a big subject. Um, the invention of photography alters the the dynamic of the visual arts in terms of that. Um, Photography means that if you want a picture of yourself that kind of looks like you and will do as your portrait, you don't, you can, a photographer will do that. A painter doesn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. um, showing the world in photographic sort of reality, uh, that kind of, you know, that, that neighborhood gets heavily occupied by uh, photographers, which leaves the the you know painters the, the the other visual artists uh, you know they can start doing like I think it was Picasso said like um, you know no you know uh, a tree looks like a tree my painting looks like a painting you know and I I don't paint trees I I do images uh, that entertain me it's interesting that um, because I had an interest in the art world. 
Um, and th that period, the late 50s, early 60s, the, the huge movement in, in, contempor in, in contemporary art was the New York, the, abs the show we just had at the AGO, Abstract Expressionism, Jackson Pollock, uh, Franz Klein, uh, The Boys. And um, somebody, uh, if you just looking at abstract expressionism in a kind of general way, somebody once said of jazz that it, you know, it was a unique music because it was um, composed as it was being played. And indeed, you could say of gestural, you know, Jackson Pollock painting, it was composed as it was played. Yeah. And that world, I thought everyone I knew, I mean, nobody, like, you know, I'd walk into my friend's studios, like, you know, I thought the whole world lived on John Coltrane and Sonny Stitt and uh, <laughs> Basie and you know uh, all that stuff, uh, because the 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 you know the abstract expressionist painters that I knew in the, the Toronto scene and to some extent Montreal, um, that was you know that was that was the big driver. They all wanted to be a thing. I had one uh, one of the bad things that I was bad at. I want. I thought I tried to be a drummer, and um, I learned. I got to hanging out with a bunch of musicians in Hamilton and so on. Learned a lot of Rick Wilkins was teaching at the, that time and uh, was a wonderful drummer in Hamilton. Just died, Don Sabire. And uh, I, you know, I learned quickly that, you know, uh, where music is concerned, I am a fan, not a player, you, <laughs> yeah. know, uh, yeah. you know. And I've stated that, you know, I, I take the notes, I don't uh, touch the sticks. Yeah, I, I kind of got to that point uh, when I was in high school and I was playing the trumpet, I guess at one point I thought, well, you know, this would be kind of interesting, you know, you play with the symphony orchestra. And, Suddenly, I, it dawned on me, kind of like, no, that's that's not going to happen, Ted. <laughs> Time to think about something else. Maybe you get pretty lips. Yeah, there you go. I had I had a fine embouchure. Uh, about Face is one of the books um, that uh, that features your photography, and in fact, uh, I guess he was your dispatcher. Uh, oh, the king, Ronnie uh, Guglietti, the king you, of the dispatchers. Yeah, and I and I and I asked myself when when I looked through these, uh, some some are just remarkable, re re remarkable pictures. When, when, when you sit down to do a portrait photography, would, do you, is it something that you see in the person's face that you think, okay, I have to make sure that this comes out? Because everybody has sort of, if not uh, a distinguishing feature, there's something about their face that, that is, that you would, if you had to use one word to describe somebody, it's that person's face, you'd say jaw, or you'd say eyes, or you'd say, you'd say chin, or, or mm -hmm. curvature of, of, of the skull. Is, do, do you go along those lines? I, I tell you, I, I, I came up with a, a, you know, a clever quote that I treat students to when I lecture occasionally. Great portraits for me, the, the successful portrait is given, not taken. And the trick is to persuade the subject to decide what they're going to do for you. And, uh, you know, that comes out of who they, obviously, all the, you know, the stewing chemistry of a personality. Um, I see what I do, the kind of portraiture I do, I see it as journalism. I want to engage the re some slice of the reality of mm -hmm. the person there that hopefully is of interest and, you know, whatever. And, yeah, I, you want to organize the lighting or you want to create a visually literate image, you know, that has strengths and, you know, it's a strong image in some way. But in terms of dealing with the subject, and the, the, one of the things I also say is, um, you know, social skills and, and uh, the ability to interact with people is photographic equipment. You know, and um, I guess, you know, I've never had a big problem talking to anybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, that served me very well because you can sort of, um, uh, and, and a, oh, eclectic scholarship. I mean, a lot of the people I knew, I photographed, you know, I knew their music or I read their books or whatever. Guglietti, yeah, I, I, you know, was responsible for a good hunk of my living uh, back in the 50, in the the late 50s when I was in the cab career. They say that people who work in, in, in the medical profession, doctors and therapists and nurses, etc., 
uh, make the worst patients because they're they're too close to um, everything that's going on. It, can, is that true as well about uh, photographers being the worst? I, I, yeah, they, the they, they, there's a whole. It's almost like a fashionable. I I am not that way. I um, there, yeah, it's a fashionable. You know, a car, a Cartier Bresson. You could never you know get near him. Uh, you know, he, he, uh, you know these famous guys who oh no 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 you that's okay. And uh, I have actually photographed a lot of my brother photographers, yeah, and I guess in the book here, I yeah. guess I talked them into it. You uh-huh. know. But um, in my case, I have an indiscriminate, and I don't I don't know if it's vanity or just I think of it more as a kind of curiosity. Uh, you know, the years of psychotherapy and my sensitive teens and trying to understand myself. I I like in any picture of me is of interest. Uh, a, a, birthday party Polaroids, uh, very, uh, friends of mine have done very, you know, big time images of me, Bert Bell has photographed me, Peter Croydon, um, Peter Croydon, a lot of guys, but, and, and yeah, and it's wonderful, you got a wonderful big, you know, Bert Bell, you got a magnificent image, of, um, which I, I happen to like, but no, I like them all, because I'm just curious, like, oh, you know, what do I, what do I look like, yeah. um, and they all speak to that, albeit in, you know, different voices or you know different levels mm-hmm. of um, literacy or whatever all right we'll back